Geometry nodes are pretty much brand new to Blender and they allow us to create procedural 3D models by only using nodes instead of the more traditional editing tools that you will find in objects mode and edit modes for your selected objects. In order for us to access our geometry node editor, we're going to just bring up our timeline here and then we're going to come to the editor type menu. We're going to open this up and you should see the geometry node editor located under general. So left click to change this panel to the geometry node editor. Now, as you would expect from any node system, there are currently no nodes. To add nodes to this geometry tree, click on the new button located here. This will add a new geometry tree with two nodes to start with. We have the group input and the group output. Both of these are going to be required for any node tree that you create. The output is the final result of the geometry node tree. So any nodes that you place in between these two nodes are going to be accumulated by the end in this group output node. The group input node, on the other hand, is where you can assign values that you can change in the modifiers tab, which we will be viewing in a few moments. You will always need the group input and group output nodes for your node tree in order for it to function properly. Now let's take a very quick look at some of the nodes that we're going to be learning about in this course. Now what you see in front of you is a list of all of the different nodes that are used with our geometry node system. This is the current selection of nodes available as of Blender version 2.92 beta. As time progresses, you can be sure that more nodes are going to be added to the geometry node system. But for now, let's just quickly introduce what we have available. So in the top corner, we have the main group nodes, the group input and the group output, which we have already discussed. We also have what are known as attribute nodes. When we talk about attributes with geometry nodes, we are effectively most of the time talking about things like the location, rotation and scale of an object, along with other attributes as well, such as the color. Next, we have the color nodes. So this is great for the application of materials, potentially further down the line. And at the moment, we have the color ramp combine RGB and separate RGB nodes. Next up, we have the geometry nodes. Now, right now, there are only two geometry nodes, but they are both very important, and we're going to be learning about these two in particular very, very soon. We have the join geometry node, which is going to be used to combine different instances of geometry together, and the transform node, which, as you might guess, will allow us to manipulate an object's translation, rotation, and scale using nodes instead of the values in the 3D viewport. Up next, we then have our input nodes. So here we can input various data like the vector values, traditional values, and object information. Beyond that, we have our mesh nodes located here. This is going to be more of the fun stuff where we're going to be actually using these nodes to procedurally model our 3D objects. For example, we have the Boolean and subdivision to surface nodes, which we will be making use of in this course. The next group of nodes are the point nodes. Now, this might be an unfamiliar term to you, but point nodes are effectively used as a sort of means of using a particle system to instance objects onto a plane or specific area. You will actually find that this is the most progressed part of the geometry node setup as of version 2.92. So we're going to be taking a look at the point nodes further along in the course. 
Then we have our utilities. These are effectively things like math nodes that allow us to recalculate other nodes to gain better control. And then we have the vector nodes located here. Vector nodes influence specific attributes that involve using the X, Y, and Z axes. For example, again, location, rotation, and scale. That's just a brief introduction into all of the present nodes for the geometry node system. In the coming lectures, we're going to be introducing many of these nodes to you and how to use them to create 3D models and scenes by using procedural modeling techniques with the geometry node system. Before we add any nodes to our setup here, I want to take your attention to the modifiers tab. So if we go to our modifier properties tab, you can see that we in fact have a new modifier labeled as geometry nodes. Below that, you will see the node setup that we can select. Now we can create multiple geometry nodes to attach to this modifier. But below that, we will soon be able to add various inputs depending on the nodes that we are using. For now, the one thing we are able to do is rename this node tree. So I'm just going to rename this from geometry nodes by left clicking on the name. And then let's just type in basic. Since we're just going to start off by creating a basic object using our geometry node system.